For today, we're going to be looking at how to simplify a radical. In this example, I'm dealing with perfect squares. I mean, I'm dealing with square roots. So I want to make sure I deal with perfect squares. And those are like the square root of 4, square root of 9, square root of 16. If my root was a cube, and my root was 3, then I want to deal with perfect cubes, like 8, 27. But in this case, once again, we're dealing with uh, squares, so square roots. I'm going to split my radical into two numbers that multiplied equals 24, one of them being a perfect square. I'm thinking 4 times 6. The square root of 4 is 2, so it becomes a whole number. Now, this number and this number, the, the whole numbers, I'm going to multiply them, and I'm going to call this 4 radical 6. Radical 6, I can add simplify. I can split that as 2 times 3, but neither of them is perfect. My second term, radical 5, I cannot simplify. So I'm just going to call this negative 3 radical 5. Now, over here, the radical 12, I'm splitting this as 4 times 3. Square root of 4 is 2. Multiply the whole numbers. That gives me minus 4 radical 3. Now, on this one, I'm thinking 9 times 6. The square root of 9 is 3, so that gives me plus 6 radical 6. Combine your like terms. Those are the numbers that have the same radical. In this case, we get 10 radical 6 minus 3 radical 5 minus 4 radical 3. Now, in multiplication, let me distribute the radical 5. Whole numbers with whole numbers, radicals with radicals. So when I look on the first case, I have a negative sign, radical 25. Now when I go radical 5 times 1, that's basically 1 radical 5. Now when I distribute this way, I get positive 3 radical 5 minus 3. Now, at the very beginning, square root of 25, that basically becomes a 5. So I have minus 5 plus square root of 5 plus 3 square root of 5 minus 3. I'm going to combine like terms. So that gives me negative 8. On these two, they have the same radical. Technically, I have a 1 in front of these. So I'm going to write this plus 4 radical 5. Now, the way we simplify radicals, there is one nice number. I'm going to introduce to the number i. i is a number such that when I square it, when I multiply it by itself, I get negative 1. So that's why we're going to say that i is the square root of negative 1. Now we're going to be able to get the square root of negatives. All right, the square root of negative 12, let me break that as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. I know the square root of 1 is i, the square root of 4 is 2, and square root of 3 I cannot simplify. So my answer will be 2i radical 3. When we have on the outside a number in an i, we write the number first. So 2i radical 3. Now let's take a look at this case. Now 256, I'm going to break this as the square root of negative 1. Somebody can come and say, well, the square root of 256 is 16 because it's a perfect number. But let's say we did not. Let's say I'm breaking it 256 and I'm more like, well, 256, I can divide it by 4. And that gives me square root of 64. 256, I'm going to break it as 4 times 64. I know square root of 1 is i. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 64 is 8. When I multiply my numbers, I get 16 and then i. I have no more radicals because I'm dealing with a perfect square. 